Welcome, everybody. This is The Mo Show on Rock M Radio. I'm your host, Chad Moeller. I was part of the Mizzou Athletics Department as the PR guy for over 25 years. And my goal for this show is to bring in great names of past and present Mizzou lore and just have some fun conversations, reminiscing and talking about the Tigers, talking about college athletics uh, and even just life in general. Uh, This is episode number two of my fledgling show, so uh, I very much appreciate you joining in. And I am very excited to bring you my first ever guest, and he's a name and a voice that any Tiger fan will know very well. Uh, It's the voice of the Tigers, Mike Kelly. Um, Just a quick setup, Mike is one of the first people I ever had the pleasure of getting to know really well when I started at Mizzou as a grad assistant uh, back in the Stone Ages. you know, I spent a lot of time over the years um, helping Mike and the broadcast team calling Tiger football basketball games, uh, helped them out with a lot of different things over the years, um, you know, home and away. And, and you get to know somebody really well when you're on buses and planes and you're in cramped radio booths and hotels, uh, you know, for almost 25 years of road trips. So um We had a great conversation where we talked about all sorts of things related to the Tigers and the broadcasting business and uh, state of college athletics. So um, with that, I hope you enjoyed the episode. I sure had a blast catching up with my old friends. So without further ado, here is the voice of the Tigers, Mike Kelly. Mike Kelly, everybody. Mike, good evening. How are we doing? My man, it's been too long. It has been, no doubt. It's, uh, I really appreciate you joining in and, uh, helping me with this show and just talking about Tigers and college athletics. So I uh, appreciate it. Um, I thought we'd start maybe, um, what, what are the numbers for you now? What are you up to number of years calling Tiger games? Do you know the number of games in both football and basketball, even just approximate numbers? Where, where are you at now? Uh, that's a good question. So started in 89 doing Tiger Talk. Started doing color in basketball in 1990, the 90 91 season. Play by play in basketball in 91 92 season. Um, I'm at just under 1,030 games called in basketball. Football started in the the start of the 94 season with the start of Larry Smith and his tenure at Missouri. I think it's I think, I think it's like 500 and, or excuse me, 370 something consecutive games, maybe 72. Right. Um, wow. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I it, it's, yeah, 372. So, you know, if I'm fortunate enough to keep at this for a while, maybe I'll see 400. <laughs> so, hey. Um, I, yeah. I was going to ask, I, I was going to ask if there's a number you want to get to. Is there, do you think about no, it? Like you, that know, most I, I just, you know, I mean, you, you and I have known each other for a long time. I mean, golly, almost 30 years. And, uh, you, you know, I, I just, and I think you, I think I've also, we've talked about my approach to this and it's, I want to keep doing it as long as I can do it, but as long as I can do it, at a level that it deserves to be done, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, and you know this because you are one of those people that I've had conversations with during the off seasons, leading into the next season of give me an evaluation, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, and and I've had that dialogue with you and with others that that I that I respect. Um, I'm healthy. Uh, I feel good. Um, you know, and, and I'm excited about the future with that, particularly in football and, and basketball. Um, but I, I'm excited about the future. So, yeah, I, I, uh, but at the end of the day, it's not my job, right? It's like, you're the seat holder because at the end of the day, that the job itself belongs to the rights holder, Mizzou sports properties and Learfield communications, but then also with the approval of the University of Missouri. And so if those two bodies want me to continue, then I want to continue. And, uh, you know, all signs right now is that, you know, I'll continue into season number uh, 31 in football beginning in the fall and season number 
34 doing play by play and I think 35 and part of the broadcast if I'm if 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 I can do math I'm anyway so it's just you know it's 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 I've been blessed Chad and and, and I've I've shared that with you many many times is that I I'm I'm very fortunate to be in the position that I'm in well it's been an amazing run and and obviously Tiger fans hope it goes for much longer um do you have any idea that you're your longevity and how that rates like within the power five, are there guys that have been doing it longer than oh, you yeah. at the same school? Yeah, yeah. Are there a lot? There can't be too well, many. I don't, right? I don't know about the number, the sure volume. Yeah. But I was, I was talking with Tom Bowman from Learfield the other day who oversees all of the broadcast operations for all of their properties or for corporate, I should say. Um, and we were talking about next season. Um, but Don Fisher in Indiana just completed his 50th season. Holy cow. Well, and Don is a remarkable broadcaster. He's a, he's a wonderful, mm-hmm. wonderful person. Um, I fed, I first met Don in 1985 or 86. I think it was 85 um, when I was working in Champaign. And he was broadcasting Indiana games then. And so uh, – um, yeah, just a, just a terrific figure, um, you know, in terms of others and longevity, I, I just, I'm not well versed on it to tell you the truth nationwide who, who's been doing it for a while, but, but, uh, you know, I mean, to get to 30 years at anything is, is, is obviously a, is obviously a milestone, but also a blessing. No, yeah, that's special stuff. Hey, so when you were growing up, we kind of go start from the beginning here when you were growing up did you know that broadcasting was going to be your calling or or how if if you didn't how did you kind of come about there i I really didn't um i wasn't one of those guys that you know went to bed at night with a transistor radio in my ear right you know if i did it was probably with casey on you know um listening to a little real rock radio there you go st louis um (laughs) So kind of grew up with that, but, you know, it, I really didn't know, like, at a young age, what I was going to do. I mean, who does, right? You can, for those that did and that followed through on their plan, God bless them. Um, you know, when I got into college, I thought I was going to be an attorney. Um, hmm. And then decided that wasn't really, from an academic standpoint, a path for me. <laughs> um so then I started thinking about, you know, well, what can I do to stay close to sports? Um, and, you know, about my my sophomore year, I started thinking that that, you know, maybe broadcasting would be would be something that I want to pursue. Um, and, and this is at SIU Carbondale Sports. Yeah. He, he's a Saluki. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, um, but I don't want to minimize like while I didn't grow up with the transistor headphones in at night, listening to baseball, I listened to plenty of baseball as a kid because my father and his influence, I mean, you know, he, he constantly, you know, had camo X on, mm-hmm. you know, whenever he would pick me up from whatever event I was at or practice or things like that. And, you know, I, I think back in, you know, my dad, we lived in, you know, a little, small cluster of a community outside of Dupo, Illinois. Uh, it was actually East Crondelet, if you will, um, which if you if you think about our cluster kind of north Dupo, East Crondelet was the mailing address. Um, you know, my dad worked, um, you know, down in Festus, Missouri uh, okay. for a number of years. And so he would get up and, I mean, commute, you know, 50 miles to work every day. Uh, sound familiar? Um, <laughs> anyway, um, but you know, so he he constantly had KMOX, and so you know, by osmosis, you you familiar with the voices, you know. And in sure. fact, then I mean, KMOX was the preeminent AM station in the United States, and you know, from you know Bob Hardy to Jack Carney to Jack Buck to you know, Bob Costas to Dan Kelly to, 
just the number of different terrific broadcasters that came through there from Bill Wilkerson to Bob Starr to, um, you know, just John Rooney, just a variety of different names. Um, you know, you became familiar with those people. And so, you, so for me, when I was listening to the sporting events, you know, you obviously gained a level of respect. And when I got into the business, you know, you're never sure what, you're never sure that you're really good enough to do it, right? It, mm -hmm. Yeah. It kind of, I've always said that radio or broadcasting or any kind of performing, it's its kind of like the, you know, like the NFL draft. It takes, or, or, or Broadway, it takes one person to like you. Yep. Um, but my goal when I got into it was, you know, I want to work at Camo X Radio. That was, that was for me the a destination because it was a, a well-respected, such a part of the fabric of the community of St. Louis um, and had so many different sports properties at the time that, you know, you know, why wouldn't you want to be a part of that? And so, you know, I eventually got there in 1988, but the path, you know, took a little bit of a, took a couple of years to, to fulfill that. Sure. I don't know that this will resonate too much, but, um, do you remember the very first game you ever called? And I'm not talking Tigers. I'm talking just the first time you ever sat calling live action on a radio station. Do you remember what that was? And yeah, it was. Uh, I think it was yeah, I think it was a Murfreesboro High School football game. Okay, uh, and that would have been in the in the fall of like 19. 83, I think. Um, I worked with a guy named Doug Dillard, who was a communications student at Southern. Mm -hmm. uh, we did it for a small radio station in Murfreesboro, Illinois, WINI. And, you know, that was one of the part of the charm of being at Southern is that they had a very good radio and TV program. And you literally, at that point in time, had the opportunity to work in both radio and TV. But it was such a small, uh, small community, and there were so many other smaller communities that had such an, I think, a driving uh, interest in sports that they broadcast, whether it be Murfreesboro or Heron or Carterville or Benton or, or West Frankfurt, they broadcast their high school football games. So there were these small radio stations that college kids could get jobs at to get opportunities to kind of, you know, build your path or build your resume and kind of, kind of get a start. Sure. So if you could get a copy of that broadcast, would you want to listen to it or would it be painful? Oh, it'd be painful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it'd be painful just because of the, well, the performance one, but right. plus the, um, the mechanics in which you would broadcast games back then. I mean, sure. you know, we were talk about, you know, Ben Franklin waiting for a thunderstorm. I mean, we had these huge <laughs> antennas that you would, that you would carry with you and attach them to the back of either the high school stands or the press box. And it was called a Marty unit. And the right. Marty would literally kind of like a CB radio sort of send a signal back to the station. And that's how we do games. And then, uh, so just listening to how bad that had to sound back in the day, but um, <laughs> that was radio, you know, back in the wow. back in the early '80s. And so, wow. you know, eventually the equipment got better. I mean, um, you know, I I left Carbondale and I worked for three weeks in Olney, Illinois. Um, and you know, it's the home of the white squirrel. I mean, you knew this because you're a geography major. Of course, wow. one of the few places in the state of in, in the country where it's indigenous to white squirrels. Um, but I was there for three weeks and I just was, I was miserable in week one and, uh, literally was on the phone during my first week, trying to find an exit opportunity and an exit strategy. And, uh, fortunately a friend of mine who, who was still in Carbondale at the time, his father was a program director in, in Champaign and, uh, like Wednesday of my first week, like, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I'm like moved there on Saturday, started on Monday. I was I was spinning records on the hot hit radio station at the time. Like that was my job from like from like eleven to like two, but like from nine to eleven, I was doing I was I was the DJ on the memory maker hits of the thirties, forties, and fifties. Oh my! Um, 
like literally you could just take an album and just like so it's like a plastic disc for those that don't know but take an album <laughs> put it on a turntable and, and right. like, literally i'm on the phone saying i've got to get out of here like <laughs> um, and literally wednesday I, my friend calls he says hey i think my dad's got a sports opening in champagne uh i drove up on thir on thursday Drove up on Thursday. I came back on Friday and I put in my two weeks notice. The, wow. the, the Friday of my first week and then moved to Champaign. Easter of 1985. Okay. Um, to a radio station called WDWS. They're still the flagship station for the University of Illinois. Um, Jim Turpin was a terrific mentor. Jim Manley was the guy that hired me. But, uh, you know, there was a, it was the perfect landing spot for somebody that really wanted to dive in and, and learn about this thing called sports broadcasting because Chad, they gave me, I did, I did morning sports. Uh, I, I leave at noon. I'd come back. I do afternoon drive sports. And then I did a talk show five nights a week. I had a, you know, one to two hour talk show. In addition to, I got the opportunity to do Illinois women's basketball and I did play by play for the university, university of Illinois women's uh, volleyball team. I was the first broadcaster West or East of the Mississippi to ever travel and do home and road matches for a division one volleyball program. Is that right? Uh, yeah. And that was in, that was starting in, in, in the 86, 87 season. So, um, yeah, so it was fascinating. It was a great way, great training ground. And, uh, you know, it was there for until 1988 and then started at KMOX in 1988. And then it's just your association with KMOX. You got introduced to Mizzou Connections. Is, how, how did that come about? How did you get on the call for the Tigers? So Robert Robert Highland, it started like this. Uh, Mr. Highland, the longtime vice president, uh, Vice President, Senior Vice President of CBS Radio, General Manager of KMOX Radio. Um, he came in literally, I started in 88 and late summer of 89. He walks into the office, the sports office, and he says, you're off Mondays and Tuesdays. I said, I am. He said, how would you feel about driving to Columbia, Missouri every Monday night to host this radio show with their football coach called Tiger Talk? I said, I'm in. What do I need to do? He said, it's, I'll take care of it. You know, they'll be in touch with you. And we'll, and that's how it started. And so, you know, um, uh, that was Bob Stull's first season mm -hmm. at Mizzou. We used to do it at the old Days Inn out by the interstate. Oh, gosh, and yeah. Joe Castiglione, <laughs> Keith Sampson from Learfield was the engineer who would be there next to us. Joe would sit there at a little table and answer phone calls for us. Um, wow. And then when Joe outgrew that position, we had others, you know, <laughs> from the, from athletics that would do it. Um, our friend, Julie Dorn, you know, when she was uh, still in athletics, you know, would, would be there at times, but, but that's how it began. And then, um, you know, in 1989, 90 season, Rod Kelly was doing color with Tom Dorr. Mm -hmm. Rod had some health issues. I filled in a couple of times doing color with Tom when Rod had some issues. Um, and then Rod couldn't travel and continue. And so in 1990, Joe asked me if I would do color with Tom Doerr. Um, and and, I, and I, I, I say this fully, and you've heard me say this before. And then a God thing happened. I mean, Tom Doerr at the end of the season looks over at me and says, hey, uh, I'm going to Chicago to do TV for the Chicago Bulls. Um, so, you know, good luck. And <laughs> Stick Malone and Roger Gardner called me like literally a few weeks after the season was over and said, Do you want to do Mizzou basketball? And so that's all it all that's how that's how the relationship began. And then prior to the ninety four season, Bill Wilkerson mm -hmm. went to go do the Phoenix Cardinals. And so when he left to go do the Arizona Cardinals in the NFL, that's when the football opening happened. Right. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing how the path takes you, you know, down the road and um, the connections you make and what it leads to down the future. So, um, um, so as you're developing your chops as a broadcaster, um, you know, people, I guess, uh, what develop signature calls, that kind of thing. And I know you've kind of 
uh, take it to the house is kind of a signature call of yours, if you will, on the football side. You know, I can think of basketball bang and um, and those kinds of things. How do things like that evolve as a broadcaster? Is that something you consciously try to to hone or is it just something you say one time and you think, oh, I like that. I'll go with that. For me, I think it's been kind of organically. Um, mm -hmm. So if you think back to. So 94 season. I'm watching practice, right? Prior to the start of the 94 season. And I'm listening and I hear I hear defensive backs saying to each other, hey man, intercept that, take it to the house. Okay. Hey man, intercept that, take it to the house. I'm like, ah, oh, I, I kind of <laughs> like that. Yeah. And so literally that was the that was the origin of that back in back in the 94 season. Um and, and I try not to over, you know, as you get through it, you don't want to try and, you know, so you try to be selective and be smart sure. how to use it. Um, you know, from a basketball standpoint, from a phrasing standpoint, um, you know, it just, again, it just kind of happened. I mean, it's just kind of like, you know, bang or splash or, you know, um, uh, watching a ball that rattles off the rim, pinballs. I mean, that was, a, that was mm -hmm. pinballs was something I used to use in yeah. volleyball, you know, pinballs around players. Okay. And so it's just, it's just descriptive phrases that, that, that pop in your mind, um, you know, I, I think everybody is a, I think everyone who's who's in this business, um, have got pe ha, ha, they have people that have influenced, influenced them, right? Also, in, influenced their style a bit, um, and I think back to, you know, I've certainly been influenced by Jack Buck. I've certainly been influenced by. Um, the work of Bob Costas. I've been influenced by the work of Tom Doerr. I've been influenced by the work of Tom of uh, John Rooney. I've been influenced by the work of Kevin Harland. Um, I've been influenced by others, though nationally, who who I appreciate their work. Um, but like, I'm not one that again going back to the days if I wasn't the guy laying in bed listening to the transistor. <laughs> I'm not a guy that spends a lot of time spinning around the dial. I mean. <laughs> If, if, if I'm listening to the radio, I'm either listening to something rock, something country or, or, or you know, something Christian. I mean, that's, that's, that's just kind of the three venues that are, are genres that I go to. Um, so, you know, I, I just don't spend a lot of time listening to others, you know. And so, if, again, it's kind of it's kind of happened organically, I guess, if if that makes any sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. Hey, so we'll detour just real quickly into music. What uh, what are you listening to now? Anything new that you're uh, you've been getting into? You know what? I I you'll love this because um, I started to 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 turn on recently a Kurt Cobain uh, nice. documentary. Okay. It's on Max. Um, and I, I think I've seen that one. Yeah. yeah, you have. I think so. Yeah, yeah I've seen yeah, lots I of do. Kurt Cobain documentaries. Anyway, so I started I started watching that, and then. You know, like literally this afternoon, I was just like, I mean, I was listening to, from everything from Stone Temple Pirates to Pilots, I should say. So Stone Temple Pilots to I was listening to some old Sawyer Brown country music with, you know, Mark Miller, who was the lead singer of Sawyer. I just kind of doinking around. I mean, um, and I think I even had on like some some Dion Warwick, you know, just kind of listen to that a little bit today, too. So nice. I, all over the map, you know, nice. just uh, all over. Well, the map. I will, uh, I'll stump from one of my favorite groups, Black Crows. Their new album is killer. If you like the Black Crows at all, highly recommend that one. Raise your hand, raise your hand. If you took Chad Moeller to a Metallica <laughs> concert at Bush Stadium, raise your hand. Yeah, that would be you. And I was there and we had a blast, man. I've, uh, I get those pictures that pop up on the memory thing every so often. That, that was, that was fun. Well, you, and you turned me on, you know, yeah, uh, huh. to a little bit of that. So they put on a show, didn't they? Oh my gosh. Yeah. They're, that, that's why they're still kicking. They know how to do it. Yeah. Um, Hey, can you give, um, give people a look into the life of a division one play by play guy, you know, take us through like a standard week during football season. Let's say, let's say Mizzou plays a game on Saturday, right? The game's over, win or loss, whatever. And there's a game the next Saturday. 
Take us through the week leading up to that next game. How, how does it look for you? Um, for me, and, and again, everybody's different because we all have different roles. I mean, there are some who had a role who, who now have a role similar to what I used to have when you and I were colleagues in, inside of Mizzou Athletics, and, and and I had a role within mm. the department. Um, my full time jobs in the insurance industry, and so um, you know, for me like the preparation for me starts in the preseason. Like I try to see as many of the preseason camp practices as I can. I went to, I think all but one this, this prior to this last season. So Mm -hmm. when camp's over, I want to have committed to my, to my memory numbers. I want to know numbers of skilled position players. I don't want to have to search for it. I want to be able to see a guy come in, know who it is and and be able to focus. Cause in my mind, that gives me time that lessens the preparation time week to week. And so um, for me, if the game gets over on Saturday, then Sunday, um, you know, I start working on my templates or my two deeps or my boards, if you will. Um, you know, Have you, you ever s- figured a uh, page maker out? I'm doing pay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's not page maker. What, what, what's the Come on, man. There Come you go. Yeah. Yeah. I've got That's some right. That's sweet right. products. Uh, <laughs> very inexpensive Adobe suite of products. Um very nice. There are some people, Chad, there's actually a service, and I, I, you, you mentioned that, but there's actually a group that different play-by-play and color analysts will utilize that they pay them X amount of dollars a year and they mm-hmm. produce their boards for them. Sure. Um, you know, for the, you know, the guys that are doing college in the NFL and they're doing multiple games, that makes, that makes a world of sense because it's, it's wow. it takes, it takes time. For me, I think it's, you know, I think it's important for me and for my preparation style to do my own boards. And so gotcha. that starts on Sunday. And, yep. you know, fortunately, um, you know, you used to have to like call the sports information director and say, Hey, can you, can you fax me <laughs> your, 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 your too deep uh, from the week before you're dating uh, us brother. No, I know. Or you remember the, the there also used to be a system. If you remember on a fax machine, you would dial into a main number mm-hmm. and you hit in numbers to bring up the individual schools and then hit in part of that menu something to download the game notes. So, do, do you remember that whole system? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it would fax it right back to you. Yeah. So yeah. so now with with um with with most people they you know they'll they'll put their game, you know, they put their game notes out, out you know, the week before. And so I'll I'll start working on the, the next week's opponent. I'll pull those game no- notes off from them, whatever their game was, start putting together the template, get their updated stats on Sunday and start working on all that on Sunday. And that's usually, that usually takes, you know, two to three hours, depending on the availability of information. And then, um, you know, when we get into the week, then you're constantly just updating the template, uh, getting to a final product, based on things you're reading in the news, things you're seeing online. Um, you know, as you know, I'm, I, I, I don't, I, I have no social media presence and I think I'm a happier individual because of that. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I don't use it because, you know, it's, instead of just sitting there looking at it, it's just, you know, now you can be selective. Um, but, you know, so you'll, you'll update it through the week. You know, most your opponents, most of the coaches, particularly in the SEC, they'll do their weekly news conference. You can download those and watch those. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you know, the the folks with Mizzou football have been terrific in terms of getting getting you know video uh, that I can watch each week, and so I'll watch that as as the week goes on. And so, and then you get to the point where, you know, it's it, it's time to, and usually on Thursday or Friday, I'll I'll, I'll print out my game notes and then kind of go from there, but. Um, you know, game day, I'll have my, my boards in front of me. I put together two, two other pieces of paper that just have the skill position players for each team that I kind of fold up and have in front of me in my hand. And then just various notes, like somebody's getting this X amount of yards. Somebody needs X to do this. Someone's had, you know, however many consecutive catches or, you know, things like that. So I'll just put individual game notes taken from things I, I, I put together during the week and have those in front of me too. 
obviously football and basketball are a lot different to call. Do you see either one as more challenging or what are, I don't know, what are the differences between the two sports? I've always answered that question in this manner. With football, it's the number of people on the field at one time. Hmm. You know, you've, you've 22 people on the field at one time trying to keep track of each and every one of those folks and, and things like just invariably think things can happen with basketball. It's the pace, just being able to, 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 to be able to, to, to handle the pace being able as you're doing the game to selectively edit in your mind, what you were, or would not say based on what's taking place in front of you. Um, so those would be the, the two difference number of people and then the pace. Sure. How, how many people do you have talking to your, in your ear at any one time, you know, between the studio and your, your sideline guy and your color guy and all that. Um, Can it get pretty confusing at times? No, I mean, it, it, if, no, not really. I mean, we're, we're different from TV in that our, you know, and, and, you know, we've got our group of people, so we're connected to Learfield. We've got a person on the board back at Learfield that can talk back to us and who will. Um, and then you've got our engineer inside the booth for football. Um, and then we have a producer in the booth for football. And so it's primarily those three people that will be talking. Um, and then, um, you know, then between Howard, Chris and I, um, you know, I've got a spotter um, who primarily just is focused on defensive tackles. Um, and then, um, uh, you know, Chris down on the sidelines. And so, um, you know, that's a matter of just kind of working – you know, if he has things, he just jumps in and, and things like that. So mm -hmm. um, people talking in the ear isn't as isn't, is big of an issue or isn't really an issue. Uh, you know, but we do have – there's there's three people. Right. Basically. Uh, so what, what you've mentioned a lot of names that were maybe some influences and helped you get started in the business. I, I wanted to ask you, um, what would a dream broadcast booth – be for you let's say you were you were calling a mizzou game of let's say a mizzou football game and you can't pick your current guys so we, we got to leave them out yeah um let, let's say you know you could have a, a four-man booth you're one of them calling a big mizzou game anybody at any time who would a few of them be that you'd want to be uh be with you on the call honestly if we could go back in time I, I, i'd grab dan kelly and jack buck and i'd put them up front and i'd get the hell out of the way and just have a nice little <laughs> um yeah. You know, and then, you know, I'd have Bob Starr waiting in the wings because, you know, people that Bob did football on, on for, for Missouri uh, at, at part in time. So did Dan. So did, so did Jack. Um, so did Harry Carey, obviously. Um, Bob was a terrific football broadcaster. Eventually went out to California. I think he did the Angels. Um, you know, and Dan Kelly, known primarily for his hockey broadcasting right. with the Blues. Uh, but yeah, it was, was, was fantastic at football too. So, uh, that, 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 that would, that would do it for me. That would satisfy my, my needs. That would be, that would be fun. Speaking of fun, uh, wouldn't it be fun if you could just light up referees without any repercussions? Wouldn't it be fun to be able to do that? Yeah. You know what? Um, I go at it maybe a little bit differently. Um, I, so I, I've always considered Mr. Buck as an influence in my life. And I've been, I, I don't, I don't, I don't complain about the officials. Um, I may with you and I, when we're having a beer or something, afterwards. <laughs> but on the air, Mr. Buck used to always say this, don't complain about the officials because you're not one. Don't complain about the coaches because you're not one. If you have constructive criticism or if there's something or as an example you can use and use that, um, you know, and so, so I've never been one that, that has, has, has felt like the need to, to go after people because the most important thing of what he would tell you is call the play, right? That's what people are tuning in is to call the play. They don't want to hear you as an official because you're not one. They don't want to hear you coach because you're not a coach. Describe yeah. the play. That's what people are listening to. Um, and so that's always kind of been my philosophy. Hmm. Sound advice. And, and yeah, I, you know, I kid, obviously I've got great respect for, for officials. They have a very tough job that I sure as heck wouldn't want to do. And they um, get it 99.89% yep. right. That's right. 
in both sports. Hey, um, talking about just college athletics landscape in general, um, obviously we, we've both been around it for a while. We've seen things evolve quite a bit over the years. Uh, and more specifically, just in the last, you know, three, four years with the advent of, um, you know, NIL and the transfer portal and all that stuff. Um, and then, you know, maybe even more specifically, the college football playoff that's coming up this year for the first time. Um, what are some of your thoughts on all that stuff? I think the expanded field in the football playoff is good. No. Uh, I think we all know what's what's driving it. It's 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 the almighty dollar, but but added opportunity. Um, I think is a good thing. I think it's a, it, it completely will increase um, the level of interest at that point in time. Um, it, it'll 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 just absolutely crush it from a rating standpoint. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously it can be done. We used to always hear, well, it can't be done because of the academic calendar. <laughs> Folks in lower divisions have been doing it for years, and it's worked fine. So. Um, so yeah, so looking forward to that. I think, I think increased opportunity is good. And I say that when it comes to football, I, I, I am opposed to increasing the size of the NCAA tournament in basketball. I think 68 is, is a perfect size for that field. And I, and I've always been of the philosophy. You don't, no one ever, no one ever, um, gets robbed by not being into the, by not making it. Yeah. You don't get snubbed. You didn't win enough. You know, as our f old friend Gary Pinkle used to always say, if you're good enough, you're in, right? Yeah. If you're yeah. good enough to win, you you win. And if you're not good enough to win, then then you're going to the NIT or you're, or you're watching from the sidelines. So right. uh, that's always just been my philosophy. It's very realistic. You know, you want to get in the tournament, win games, schedule difficult games, work your schedule so you're playing difficult games, and then win. Uh, and if you don't win enough games, then you're not going to get in. Um but in terms of um, where we are, right, the landscape, and it's changed so much. And I think this whole um, ecosystem that we're currently in, I think it's good. I think it's good for the for the individuals, particularly in football and basketball, the players. I don't know if it's good for the fans. Right. I don't know. That's a right. question. Um, I think back to. Um, you know, when Coach Stewart was at Mizzou, right? And you had this fan club called the Tail Twisters. And the Tail Twisters would would befriend the players as they came in as freshmen and they'd be there for the most part. All the guys were there for four years. And then they'd, you, 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 the Tail Twisters on senior day would have pictures of all the kids, all the seniors on their, on their, on their t shirts. Nice. Guys would wear that in warm ups and you'd have a lot of affection, right? Because people grew to know these student athletes. Well, those days are over. Like it's over. It's, it's yeah. it's now transactional. I mean, a college athletics is transactional. That's what it is. Hmm. Um, it's unmitigated free agency. Um, and uh, while again, I think it's while while the players are thriving because of it, I don't I don't know if they're learning everything that maybe they need to learn at this stage of their lives. Right. Coach Stewart used to always say, "Is it a bump or is it a speed bump or is it a brick wall?" Right. Like. Why are there reasons why? And I think anybody would 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 look at a guy and say, "Man, this is your third school in in four or five years, and and yeah. what have you gained from that experience? And 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 are you act absolutely tough enough to stick it out? I mean, if I'm if I'm looking at it from an employer standpoint, like this guy came, is this guy worth hiring because? You couldn't stick it out in uncomfortable situations. I think it's, it's something that employers would look at. Right. Um, so I think those are honest questions, but um, the ecosystem has changed. NIL, again, good for the players, um, you know, but I, th I think there has to be at some point in time um, some kind of system that, that, that allows some type of guardrails to be brought in. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's no, I, I don't know how you do that. I mean, Man. You know, part of me is, and this is just me, right? You and I talking. Uh, yeah, nobody's listening to this, I'm sure. So well, no, but I, you know, what I'm saying is like <laughs> we're, 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 we're pontificating on different things and, and different yeah. thoughts. And part of my thought is, is, okay, they are, they are being paid, right? They mm -hmm. are semi-professionals, right? Um, do you get to a point where you make players sign a contract that requires them to be 
at said institution for X number of years. I don't know. But players and their agents, and they all have agents, particularly in the sport of basketball now, you know, they're worried about them and their side, right, being compensated and being taken care of. Well, I think now the other thing that if you want to treat them as, as, right, like treat them as adults, what about lack of production? How do you handle that if you're the institution? Like, should there be protection for the institution if you're paying someone X number of dollars from an NIL standpoint? I think <laughs> I'd love to see arbitration like they have in baseball. I mean, you want to talk about real life conversations? Uh-huh. You know, you've got X pitcher that is looking for this, and he is an agent or sitting across from his general manager who's telling him, Hey, you were terrible. You were absolutely awful in these situations. That's called real life. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty good training ground, right? Like yeah. you you want all these things as athletes, great. But then maybe there should be like th- th- there's consequences in the business world for not meeting numbers and things like that. And and I, I just think, you know, this this is all kind of we've opened Pandora's box and let's see what happens. Yeah. You know, but I think yeah. it would be a fascinating thing. I think being able to trade would be a fascinating thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I mean, it, we, we could spend all night talking about that stuff. And, and, and I'm with you. I'm I'm glad that the kids are getting, um, you know, value for what they're um, what they're putting out there. But like you, I do have concerns that if there aren't guardrails put in place or regulations of, of some type. But I don't know what the answer is. It's such a, a delicate um, topic to. Yeah. To and address, just, them, yeah, and do you make them employees and, and yeah. do you become employees yeah. of the university? Do, do, does the funding for for their their value? Um, yeah. And that's what you're talking about when you're talking about name, image, image and likeness. It's their value. Right. Uh, you know, does that become a line item on the budget of of individual athletic departments? That's that's again funded through donors and other other resources. Um, mm. You know, I, uh, I I've always thought this is that you know it's like sports is sports is a um sports is a passion buyer right from a from a sponsorship standpoint it's a passion buy um to me nil is a passion buy because i don't i don't see like from a business standpoint it'd be hard to explain what's the return on your investment i don't know no no well that's fascinating stuff man um and I know it stirs a lot of emotions in in people for good, for bad, whatever. But let, get back to maybe some of the more fun stuff. You've and maybe it's not a, a fair question or it's a tough question to ask you. But in all your time at Mizzou, are there a handful of memories that stand out to you that, you know, you if somebody was to ask you? Oh, there's more. Than what handful. are some of your favorites? Yeah. There, I mean, there's obviously more than a handful. I mean, this past season in football was fantastic. You know, to have a group of guys that believed in themselves and who knew uh, the coaching staff knew and, and, and Coach Drinkwitz knew this was his best team, right? They knew that as early as training camp, but then they went out and proved that it was his best team. And they did it on a national stage uh, by beating a by beating a brand program mm-hmm. uh, in Ohio State in the Cotton Bowl. And, and as you know, historically, Missouri just hasn't hasn't gotten those opportunities on a national stage to play the brand names. And so it's, so to me, I think that's, I want to believe that's the start of something special. And, and I, and I believe it is. Uh, so certainly that stands out. I mean, um, just thinking back to, you know, chronologically, if you will, um, you know, watching the basketball team uh, go unbeaten. And, and go 14 and 0 in, in, in 93, 94, and the number of people, the the components that made up that team, and and seeing how what they were able to accomplish was 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 very cool. Um, you know, the obviously Armageddon. You know, and you know, I'm looking behind you, and I'm seeing 16 and 10, thinking of the influence of what those two guys had um, on on Mizzou football, and then. You know, uh, thinking back over the last 30 plus years in basketball, the number of individual great players that have come through and watching them. But but the thing that 
I've always cherished Chad as the relationship and, right. you know, seeing guys come in as, as, you know, kind of bashful young men that, uh, you know, mature and develop into, you know, people that are, you know, have dynamic personalities that have come out over the course of four years and you're able to build friendships with. And, you know, it's kind of like, I, I, I think back to, you know, seeing like, chase and you know this this past fall when you know we had a chance to sit down with him with with coach pinkle's charity and seeing his teammates come back and you know you think about that group of guys and 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 you and i kind of live that you more so than i day to day you thought to yourself back then man these are really good kids yeah. and then you look 20 years later and not only they're good kids but they're 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 good family people they're good husbands they're good fathers um and and they're successful at what they're doing in life, and to me, that's the that's that's the most enjoyable part of this job. Mm-hmm. Watching that, that happen. So speaking of success, um, my I don't mean to embarrass you because you're not the one you know you're not the type to tout yourself, but uh, I will take a moment to mention that um, you know you are a well deserved member of several halls of fame. You know you've gotten a lot of recognition over the years. Um, what does that mean to you when to, to have something like that come down your way? It's something you never expect, but you completely appreciate. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you just don't expect it, you know, when, um, you know, it's, it's, it, I didn't get in this business to, to be recognized in a hall of fame. I did it because it, I had a passion for the job and for the industry and, and I still have that passion. Um, but it's just, it's, it's flattering and you just feel very, very fortunate. And, and I've used this word probably at nauseum tonight, but just very, very blessed to, to have the opportunity to do what I've done for as long as I've done it, you know, mm-hmm. and been a, it's been, it, it's been a true blessing to be affiliated with, with the university of Missouri for as, for as long as I have. I mean, and, you know, I, I've talked about. You know, there were great broadcasters that that have that have come through and 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 that have been in this position before. But mm. the thing that I would say about Mike Kelly is that I wanted to be here. Mm. I wanted to be here, and I didn't have aspirational goals to, you know, do a variety of other things. I, to me, I thought it was a pretty cool distinguish. Uh, pretty cool to be distinguished or to be considered as the voice of the Missouri Tigers. I mean, I still think that's, that's, that's something that I, that I cherish. And so, um, you know, it's, 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 it's just, uh, it's, it's been very, very fortunate to be, uh, to be able to hang out and do that and, and, and see a lot of wonderful, wonderful games. Yeah, no doubt. Well, so now that the season's done, uh, what's on tap for Mike Kelly up until football season? Um, hopefully a little couple trips, maybe, you know, plan a couple trips. Um, downtime. Uh, right. Chris and I have this thing. I told you this before we started this. Chris and I have this thing that, um, you know, we get done in Nashville, lose to Georgia, and I look at him and I said, I'll see you in September. <laughs> <laughs> and so – I literally, I mean, I try to unplug and I, and I really do. I mean, as soon as the season's over, I don't not working in athletics day to day, not being involved in day to day radio. Um, I, I, I literally just try to try to unplug, uh, you know, I'm very fortunate, uh, to work for a company called one digital. Um, we're in, we're a large insurance brokerage firm based in Atlanta, but we've got offices all over the country, including, in St. Louis and, um, you know, affords me the time to, to be able to, um, to follow this little passion, you know? Uh, and, um, so, you know, this is the time of year where you start diving into, you know, for, for me, it's business development season. So kind of focus on that and, and then get ready for, you know, August when that, when that rolls around, because the end of July, you know, and the start of camp is, really gets here before you know it yeah no doubt well and then i know you're working through a knee issue but eventually you'll you'll get back out on the golf course right 
I'm hoping, you know, it's going really well. It's six weeks as we're, as we speak, uh, here in, in. I had surgery on, on February the 13th. So now we're at six weeks and I'm moving really well. And, you know, I'm, I'm riding the bike and walking and, um, don't tell my doctor and I don't think he's listening, but I might've, <laughs> might've had a club out in the, out in the yard the other day, just trying to just feel how that, that just short game, goes. right? Just working on the short yeah. game, just that weight transfer. See how that go. feels, but uh, you know, I go back and see him in April. And we'll 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 see where we go from there. All right, buddy. Well, hey, I've kept you for long enough, so I uh, really appreciate your time. It was fun catching up and uh, hearing some of the stories and and how you got into the business. Um, so I really appreciate your time again, and we'll have to do it uh, do it another time. You've been a friend for a long time, and I'm proud to call you a friend, and uh, look forward to seeing you very very soon. Say hi to Sherry. Same here. You do the same with Lori and your girls, and we will catch you soon. All right, brother. Thanks, brother. Well, that's going to do it for episode number two of The Mo Show on Rock M Radio. I uh, hope you enjoyed the chat with Mike Kelly, and I will be back soon with episode number three, and that will feature the all-time winningest coach in Mizzou football history and a member of the College Football Hall of Fame, Gary Finkel. So look for that one on Rock M Radio wherever you get this podcast. Thanks for joining in. Grace and peace to everyone. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Rock M Radio, a proud partner of Fans First Sports Network. Rock M Radio is the official podcast network of Rock M Plus, a new and exciting subscription service provided by me and the other voices of Rock M Radio. Please take a few moments to head over to rockm.plus and sign up for an account today. The cost is only $5 a month, and the benefits include access to our live podcast a subscriber-only message board, weekly newsletters, and more. If you enjoyed this episode of Rock M Radio and would like to see more Just Like It beam directly into your personal device, make sure to click the subscribe button below and tell your friends. Our podcast feed is available through the Apple Podcast app for iPhone, Google Podcast app for Android, whatever app you listen to your podcast, you can also find Rock M Radio on Spotify. If you're looking for a podcast about your favorite team that is not Missouri Tigers, Fan First Sports Network is your answer. A full podcast network loaded with the team-specific podcasts covering Major League Baseball, the NFL, NHL, NBA, MLS, and more. And we'll be back with more episodes of Rock and Radio coming to you soon. Peace.